Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 7, Episode 2. This, I brought out my mop and bucket for this because there were some tears. Let's get started. And if you would consider, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. That would be so helpful for my little channel. So there's a different thing that they're doing now. What they're doing instead of showing the artists with their portraits is they're showing them separate. So here's our first artist and here's her self-portrait. So this is the portrait that gets you onto the program. You have to have a self-portrait. I think you can submit two of them. And they used to show the artist holding their self-portrait, but for some reason, on the second episode of this year, they're doing this instead. So we saw the artist and here is his self-portrait. Here is the next artist, and then we'll see her self-portrait. I, I don't know why they changed what they were doing, but um, maybe it's just a program that needs to shake things up once in a while. This is the artist, and then we'll see his self-portrait. You know, as soon as you have a knife or a skull in something, there are dark implications. <laughs> That's all I can say about this. Um, the next artist... It's strange to see them not with their holding their self-portraits. Oh, gosh. Okay, well, there's that. And so we will go on. I also want you to know I've joined a, a Facebook group that are fans of Portrait Artists of the, of the Year and Landscape Artists of the Year, and I'm getting to see um, many of these painters and the current rejection uh, what, um, portraits that they have because they just entered 2024 which closed its entry process and has let them know if they got in or not and I am just stunned by how many good painters are left behind and I think that's why I get a little bit um, mop and bucket on this particular episode. Now when I saw this one I, I have to admit to you I saw this and I'm leaving it on the screen for a little bit longer because I thought hands down this guy's gonna win the program. Hashtag Joe is always wrong. That's not going to happen. Now we go on with the photograph and then we'll see the self-portrait. Really sensitive drawing being done here. Really beautiful job. So we have a really good feel. I'm excited about that. So our first uh, model up is Sir Trevor MacDonald. He is a veteran of current affairs and a journalist. And he certainly looks like that, doesn't he? He certainly fits the role. So, four hours into the episode, the artists turn their easels around and we get to see what they did. And he's going to pick one of these to go home. This one is obviously a study in black, white, and gray. Very monochromatic. Beautiful job. Don't have a problem with it at all. But remember, the final commission is going to be a painting that, a $10,000 commission that hangs in a gallery. And I pulled back because we need to see it within context. It has to read in a gallery setting, which is very different than a home setting. And I just don't know if a black and white is going to fulfill what, you know, there's certain criteria the commission probably requires. Uh, here's the second one. Um, this is the kind of painting, if you've been following my channel, you know this is the kind of painting that I love. And it's the kind of painting that I tend to do where we simplify forms and also have some... There's not a lot of color value swap out going here, but I, I like the brevity of the strokes and, and getting um, the likeness down. You know, uh, um, I, I just, as soon as I bring out the tiny brushes, I know I'm in trouble. I like to stay with big brushes. Here's a close up. You know, I just think that's a beautiful job. And what it means is that, you know, this person was editing as they went along. So each time they made a decision about a stroke to make with the paint, you know, they mixed that color and then they executed. And that's, that's done very, very carefully. Here is one that really surprised me because his self-portrait at the beginning was so very strong. But it does show what can happen in four hours and what can happen if you're nervous. And quite frankly, what can happen if you decide on a format that's quite large because four hours, um, there's a lot of real estate to cover on a canvas or on paper. If, if you only have four hours and frankly, a lot of paint. You know, when you scale up, the usual puddles that you make of paint have to be so much bigger and you have to be pretty well practiced in that and plan for it. See how big it is compared to him? I think it was too ambitious in terms of size. If you don't remember, he was the one who was holding the skull. Now, uh, Sir Trevor MacDonald is going to pick one to go home, which has nothing to do with the final judging, and this is the one he chose. And I think that's going to be beautiful in his home. Good choice. Our next model up is Mirren Mack, and she is an actor. And 
I'm not familiar with her work, but maybe you are. There's a lot to work with there. So this could be an exciting uh, three. You know, each model has three people painting them. So there are a total of nine participants in each episode. Four hours in, they turn their easels around and this looks quite promising. Oh, this is the fellow that I thought would win, you know, the whole program. I mean, we're only on episode two of season seven, but I thought, no, nope, I've watched the program long enough. I know this is what the judges want. I do watch with the sound off because, um, because I don't want to be influenced by them. And also because quite frankly, I'm, um, they kind of make me mad. And today they certainly did. Uh, so that one, here's the, here's the next one, which um, this really speaks to me again because of simplicity of forms and softness of edges and, you know, real, a real variety of things. But uh, I think we're going to have to pull back to get a better idea of whether or not this could be worthy of a commission. Remember, one of the commenters you know, um, on my YouTube channel, when I was being very effusive about a painting, they said to me, Joe, would you pay $10,000 for that painting? It, it wasn't the painting we're seeing on the screen right now, but I thought, oh gosh, no, I wouldn't. So he kind of put that in the back of my mind that I need to think about that. $10,000, you know, that's that you should be up to the task. Close up, I like it a lot better, or I just really like it. I mean, it's a what I mean by that is it's, it's a painting I'm going to remember. I'm going to remember because it stands out in some way. It's evocative. I'm not exactly sure why. Here is a fantastic drawing. Oh my gosh, such a beautiful drawing. But, you know, again, for the commission, I don't know that a drawing is going to do it. We, we know from watching the program that uh, drawings have not succeeded at winning the, the program. Of course, that's not the point of why you enter the, the program at all. And I'm glad that um, all kinds of artists do enter. But... Um, I, I'm always surprised that, they're, that, that, they, that it, they, they don't want to pick up a brush or don't choose to pick up a brush if you paint that well. I mean, if you draw that well. All right, Mirren's pick. Let's see which one she picks. Well, she picks the one who I thought would be the winner of the whole thing. And as I already have shown, uh, sort of shown my cards, it's not going to be. Now, the la the next model up is the Vivian. Now, the Vivian is a drag queen. So this is a very different approach when it comes to portraiture because uh, this person's wearing a lot of makeup. Now the reason that I say that it's tougher when someone's wearing a lot of makeup is because it's harder to see the natural planes of a face. It just is. So, um, but you know, uh, good painters can paint anything. Um, it's just, it's just, a, uh, just a different something that w w they wouldn't have as much experience with. So four hours in, they turn their easels around. Here's the first one up, and this is drawn with pen, a red pen and a blue pen. And needless to say, I'm very underwhelmed by this. I'm underwhelmed by this because it just doesn't hold any form for me. Squint your eyes, really, really squint your eyes. And, you know, so things become blurred and you just can't find any forms at all. You can't, you find there, there's no, there's no, uh, shapes. There's no definition. It, it's, I'm all for softness and drawing, but that, that doesn't work for me. All right, here's the next one up. You know, this is probably a lot where I would have gone if I was in this situation, because I know that I would have to use colors uh, in a certain amount of drama that I would not normally use with a, a a face that that doesn't have this much makeup on it but from far away that is a very very chaotic composition it's got so much going on and what I think it really needs in order you know you need some busy spaces and some quiet spaces in a painting that background needed to be quieted down just make it an all over uh, reddish would have worked much better, would have made the painting pop. And here's the third one. This certainly looks very much like the model. And I think quite frankly, that this is the one they're gonna choose because uh, um, you know, when you when you have a portrait done of yourself, you, you generally want to have something that resembles you. And, um, and so this does, as well as the complete persona of, of this performer. So let's see, which one does the Vivian pick? We are about to see, and I don't think you'll be surprised, but uh, it is indeed the one 
with the blue background. And, uh, you know, I think it's a beautiful job. I think it was also smart to pick that size. People who generally pick this size to work in in the four hours are more successful as completing a painting than people that are more ambitious and go bigger. Now the real judging begins. This is when all the artists are lined up and only three are going to be chosen as semi-finalists for this particular episode. So it's exhausting. I know even though we watched them, watched, you know, in the condensed time, they're four hours. Here's our first winner of the day. Um, and But it's a much longer day than what we see on television, you know, in terms of people having to arrive and having a lunch break and those, and we also know that they're interrupted for interviews, which would um, really throw me off my game if someone uh, came and tried to talk to me while I'm concentrating on painting and making decisions. So those are our two semifinalists so far, and here's our third one. And as you see, the person that I chose as being the winner of the entire episode as well as the program overall, even though it was an early call, did not even make it to the end, which is often what happens in this program, and I've learned to live with it. I hope you have too, so we're just gonna move on. Uh, here's the self-portrait, where our artist had unlimited time to work, and then what he worked on today. I think the self-portrait shows that he's more resolved in terms of getting his values right, and definitely when you squint, you can see some forms there, or at least outlines of forms, but either he didn't have enough time, should have picked a smaller format, and, uh, I don't think his, his effort today was very successful. This one is, you know, it's absolutely gorgeous, you know, so is his self-portrait. Not a big difference between the self-portrait and what he did today. He can certainly handle the task, but I don't think they're going to pick a monochromatic uh, charcoal as the final commission. I, I just don't think they're going to do it. Here's the third one. Um, uh, uh, this is a beautiful painting. You know, but I hear that commenter in the back of my head saying, yeah, but Joe, would you pay $10,000 for this as a commission? I have to say no, I wouldn't. It doesn't show the skill set that's appropriate for the final task, which is that $10,000 commission. At least in my, you know, this, this is all my opinion. We know that. So the final judging is the three artists that we've seen. And, you know, they must be on absolute pins and needles. And just to get this far is is amazing. We know thousands of people enter the program. Wonderful, wonderful painters. So just to be here is, you know, you've already won. But this has to boost your career as well. And here's our winner. And, you know, I have to say, I don't have any ill will toward anybody, but I, I just don't get it. I just don't understand how this triumphed over so many good paintings that we saw today. So I love the program. You know I love the program. You know I love it, but watch it with the sound off. And we just have to carry on. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.